So let's start the class, guys. So let's start the class, guys. So you have started the subject of BL08, right? So it seems like uh, you all are after age students. And also before the start of the session, I want to confirm you which language we are going to conduct these sessions. I know very well our students are based on Tamil medium. After you completed your AAT. So which language we are going to conduct these sessions like a full of English language or we need to mix with Tamil versus English or complete Tamil. So, so what's your opinion? I need to suggestions because once we decided we need to go with that flow. So Abdurrahman is saying English medium and Revadi is saying English medium is better and Abdurrahman Tamil versus English and Nishat is saying uh, mix with Tamil and English sir and mix with Tamil and only English. Okay, let's do something like this. So we will start these sessions with uh, English medium as much as possible. I will convey the syllabuses and also the subject materials in English language. If you cannot understand it well, then we will move to kind of mix with Tamil medium. Is it fine? Because you guys also want to learn the materials and the stuffs in English medium because you are going to face an English medium examination. So it is better we can continue through the entire journey with English medium because you have completed AAT in Tamil medium and this is the right time to step up you to the Tamil medium and you have to focus on the English medium as well. And you, you also need to improve your English language. So you can understand, right? Just what I'm speaking, you can understand it, right? The simple English. I'm also not a very English proficient person. Just normally I can speak simple, simple English. So you can also understand. Right. So how many people here completed AAT? I believe at least you have just finished your level three exams in the very recent attempt, right? So can you please raise your hand or give me a chat? Do you have completed your AAT? Right. So the level three examination finished, right? So remember guys, you need to double AT pass final certificates with the AAT recommendation letter. Then only you can get exemption for the six subjects in CS Sri Lanka. That means the business level one subject and business level two, two subjects. So altogether six subjects in CS Sri Lanka. So remember you have to take your pass final certificate and also AAT recommendation letter is needed to get exemption from CS Sri Lanka. So quickly apply for the exam in exemptions for the subject as soon as possible. Okay. And all of you, once again, welcome to the very first lesson on the BL08 digital business strategy. And if people who don't know me, so I am Faisal, your lecturer. And I'm really excited to start this adventures journey with you. Actually, it's an adventure journey. C is an adventures journey, actually. So I'm really happy that uh, you have taken your first step to start chartered accountancy. And I'm sure by the end of this BL08 subject, you will completely master about digital business and strategies and all the information which is related to your examination. Okay. And also I want to make sure guys, this is not a web series or this is not a Netflix drama. So don't just watch lessons after the class recordings provided. So take your time, one step at a time, watch the videos and um, maybe take two videos at a time and just increase the speed of the lessons and understand each and every, every concept and then go to the next lesson. So that is the way it will work. Okay. Otherwise, uh, if you are going to watch it like a movie, then uh, it won't help you on your examinations. Is it understandable what I'm saying? Should I get a sono, please? Right? You got my point, right? 
So you have to learn the concepts and apply the concepts and you have to match with the pilot paper questions. Then only you can gain the marks in the BL08 paper. And also, I hope you all know that a BL08 paper is going to be computer-based exams. You know, guys, how many people know that the BL08, the digital business strategy, the paper is going to be a computer-based examination. Do you all know this? Right? So you have to get ready for your computer-based examinations. So you need to focus on your typing speed. Better you learn like a touch typing without seeing the screen or keyboard. You need to type. Okay? But uh, normally for the business level one and two examinations, it is going to be only the MCQ based. So you don't need to worry about typing much here. But when you move to other courses like ACCA or SIMA, it is going to be a typing based examinations. And also it is going to be a computer based examination. So you have to ready for that also. For that moment, uh, you don't need to worry about your typing. It's just going to be a MCQ based exam. So you have to just select the correct answer right so so let's move on so first we will do a analysis on the pilot paper so it is very important to understand the pilot paper because since you know guys uh, we don't have past papers for bl08 for this digital business strategy subject not only for this digital business strategy subject also for all the subjects in business level one and two we don't have past papers like before so you have to, we have to rely on the pilot papers, which is provided in the CS Sri Lanka website. Then we have to make our lessons and every efforts towards the pilot paper. Then it will lead to our examination success on the final paper. Okay. So let me open the pilot paper for you. Then we will analyze what kind of questions you can expect and what kind of study methodology we will adapt it. Give me two minutes. Before one or two weeks, I have sent this digital business strategy BL08 pilot paper in the group. Did you all receive it? Did you all download this? Digital business strategy BL8 pilot paper. Is it with you all? Right. So let's explore with this paper. So the instruction to candidate is the allowed time is two hours. And the total marks is going to be 100 marks on your paper. And it is included 50 questions. And all questions are compulsory questions. So there is no choice. You need to do all the questions. So let's explore and understand how these questions are structured. Right? So the first question is what best practice, what best describes the characteristic of strategic decision? So in our syllabus, we will look at about strategic decision making and also it is asking about the characteristic of strategic decision. So we don't need to memorize each and everything in these lessons. Just we should know, okay, what we have learned in this lesson. So complexity, uncertainty, impact on business operations affect the entire operation. So this is the answer. That's why they have highlighted. And the second question is levels that strategic management occurs in an organization. Sir. So it means the levels, okay, strategic management levels. So there are corporate level, business level and functional. So, so we must know about the strategic management levels and extra nets can be divided into. So we will learn about extra nets and there will be a division about extra net and it is called intranet and supranet. So this is how simply the questions are structured. And see the fourth questions. If an educational institute set, sets up web-based information systems, which allow its academic, 
staff to analyze the students grades and take decision it is an example of so they are giving an example like an educational institutes they have set up web based information system it's like a browser based systems cloud based system so it allow its academic staffs to analyze the students grades and take the decision so it is an example of intranet or extranet database and e-commerce so we must know about this each component so what does it mean by intranet and the definition of intranet and the examples of intranet and uh, what is extranet what does it mean right so what is the meaning of database and e-commerce so we need to learn similarly intranet extranet and database and commerce and the fifth question which statement best describes the purpose of data mining so there will be a concept called data mining so we need to learn about this data mining and uh, it says to discover unknown patterns of, of captured data so if you know the definition see, uh, if you see the question you will get the answer actually right because your memory power will trigger the answer for you and there is a true or false questions it is asking the most important factor in a knowledge management strategy so it is a question about knowledge management so how we will manage the knowledge right the most important factor in a knowledge management strategy is ict so it is false or true so we must know these theories and there will be a blank is original research to obtain new scientific or technical knowledge or understanding where has specific practical aim or application which often has a commercial aspect so it is talking about pure research and applied research so we must know what is pure research and what is applied research what are the differences so we must know about this and if it systems are considered to be a unique resource for a company it create core competence and competitive advantage so we must know about competitive advantage what does it mean by competitive advantage all right so first of all we need to understand all the theories and definitions about competence and competitive advantage right and which of the following is the most important advantage for cloud computing so cloud computing so provided increased storage and faster processing and improved options of upscaling so this kind of questions will become so you can understand a kind of right the taste of the question actually right it's talking about collection of screens providing information in text and graphic form any of which can be viewed by clicking the appropriate link on the screen so it is called website or internet web page world wide web okay then the 11th question is which of the following is not a reason for an organization to invest in technology right and which of the following is not an example of a velocity of big data and innovation of a new product or service is called commercialization process right so we are not going to read all the questions because it's actually a waste of time but what i'm trying to make you here you must taste taste the questions right you need to know the taste of the question so this is how your question is going to be in the computer screens when you apply for the examination right so here it is not like a pat papers like always there will be a part 2 sections or part b or part c sections you have to write it on the physical paper the answers and you need to remember all the facts and theories you have learned in the sessions and you have to recall all the informations in the examination center it is not likable here so the only thing it will work here you must learn the concept understand the concept and a little bit of memorization not a hard because it is an mcq questions when you read these questions automatically if you understand these questions the answers and the theories will come to your mind and it will pick up the correct answer for you so this is how the entire system is going to work am i make sense to you all of you guys did you understand the question structures and how you are going to crack this examination okay so my sound and my internet connection it is stable i hope from your side is it fine you can hear my voice very properly clearly loudly fine abirami it is fine right 
So all of you come back to our mind maps. So we have analyzed our pilot paper and we have gained a little bit knowledge about our pilot paper and question paper style. Okay. Then let's move to understand our, about our syllabus here. If you see the entire syllabus, guys, very recently the syllabus changed with the unit one because we have already started these lessons for the last batch. I have taught like a three, four classes, but unfortunately those three lessons we cannot use because those syllabuses were removed. So the new syllabus is attached here on your screen. Right now you're seeing. So business level two, digital business strategy, part A, part B, part C, part D. So there are four parts on your syllabus. And it is called management of technology. That is part A. And the part B, managing information in business and digital transformation. That's a part B syllabus. And the part C is nature and scope of e-business, electronic business. And the part D is all about marketing strategies in the digital age. So these are the core areas you have to focus. And very specifically, the lessons in the part A is all about management of technology, how we will manage the technology for our business. And the part B, managing information in business and digital transformation, it consists of three units, digital transformation and artificial intelligence. It is very recently, two or three weeks ago, they have updated the syllabus with digital transformation and artificial intelligence, AI technology that is ruling the world in 2024 right now. And the roles of information systems in businesses. So what are the information systems are there and what kind of role it is playing in the business and enterprise resource management systems like ERP. And the part C, the nature and scope of e-business. So we need to introduce the e-business, electronic business, and e-business environment. What kind of applications are there in the e-business? And uh, part D is marketing strategies in the digital age. It consists of three subjects, again, and marketing practices for digital platforms and mobile and social media marketing and content marketing. It is all about marketing. I love the subject, actually, the digital marketing. And these are the four core areas you have to master about this subject, okay? Then in the main syllabus area, you must know the weightage of the syllabus because according to this weightage only, they will prepare the MCQ, how many numbers of MCQ should be included in a particular subject, they will decide. So the main syllabus area, part A, part B, part C, part D, the part A management of technology, the weightage is 10%. It means you can expect a 10% percentage of the entire 100 marks and the part b managing information in business and digital transformation it is going to be 35 percentage and nature and scope of e-business 30 percentage and marketing strategies in digital age it is going to be 25 percentage so most of your marks you will gain from managing information in business and digital transformation okay and the second one is nature and scope of e-business so in today's lesson, we will focus on part A. That means the 10% of the syllabus, management of technology. So in the management of technology, what kind of specific knowledge you can see, I have highlighted some of the things. So this is the first column. It's talking about the syllabus area because most of the time, the other institutes, the other institutes, what they are doing is they're teaching the lessons from their university notes or somewhere yields in the books. And the students, they have the hope, okay, whatever the things we have taught in our lectures, it will be in the examination paper and they are going for the examinations and they will end up with a failed marks. Because the reason is CS Sri Lanka is set up the syllabus and they are updating the syllabus so they will expect the people to refer the study text actually. And with that knowledge, they have to come for the examination. But if you learn from university notes and other kind of theoretical books, and it is not going to work on the examination because they will accept and they will expect only from the study text. So I'm recommending you guys to get BL08 Study text, physical study text from Sri Sri Lanka. Okay. And already I have sent the soft copy in the group. So you got that one. 
so you must understand the syllabus area so the first part a the 10 percentage of the syllabus management of technology the second column it's talking about the knowledge component and the third column it is talking about the learning outcomes and the fourth column it is talking about the specific knowledge so in the knowledge component there are three components in your 10 percentage of the syllabus the first one is introduction to management of technology it is called 1.1 within that the learning outcomes are identify the key concept of technology management it means you need to identify what are the key concepts in the technology management so here the specific knowledge you must know in the examination so the specific knowledge it will convert as the mcqs on your examination paper so the specific knowledge is very important because that is your questions actually okay if you know the things in the specific knowledge section it means the fourth column that is the question on your bl08 paper so you must know definition of technology what is meaning by technology and what is management of technology so how we need to manage the technology what does it mean and why manage the technology why a business manage the technology and components what are the elements what are the components what are the parts in the technology so that is a specific knowledge and explain the concept of technology s curve so these are the new things updated very recently two three weeks ago right so you must know about technology s curve and the stages of s curve so there is a new thing called s curve so we need to learn about this one and the uh, knowledge component 1.2 strategic management of technology the learning outcome explain the concept of strategy so the new term called strategy right so the concept of strategy in technology management so what is strategy you must know and discuss the alignment of technology strategy with business strategy so there are something technology strategy and we need to align that one with a business strategy so what does it mean by technology strategy and what is meaning by business strategy so here the levels of strategy competitive advantage determination of competitive advantage what is technology strategy so these these are the things we will learn okay and 1.3 identify the concept of technology transfer so transferring the technology so technology transfer what is the meaning by that and channels of technology flow and explain the modes and routes of technology transfers here mechanism for the technology transfers phases in the technology transfer and identify the formation and importance of knowledge so definition of knowledge management drivers of technology management and benefits of technology management so these are the core specific knowledge that are expecting on your 10 percentage of the syllabus right so we will create these things slowly and very different approach so let's move on to the actual sessions so as i said earlier guys we are going to create these two objectives specific knowledge identify the key concept of technology management and explain the concept of technology s curve so these are the two things today we are going to understand and we have to get the knowledge guys are you with me you can understand my simple english right is it any trouble with my language or something is it manageable for you hanif what's why why is this kind of reaction i don't know are you happy or sad i just want your feedback guys because we need to make the foundation can you all understandable is it fine the language is fine right okay fine okay good so do not worry about the english language hanif okay automatically it will catch you and also you have to chase that one automatically it will catch you just learn small grammar and a kind of vocabulary that will help you on the examination that is enough because 
we are learning a professional qualification right it's not an english class right it is not a grammatical class or ielts class you just convey your knowledge in the medium of english that is acceptable you can meet so many cas on your life they don't have much profession in english they have broken english actually but they are managing own firms and they are managing international clients so you don't need to worry about english very much you must have a kind of very decent english it is helpful for your future you have to come out from your comfort zone then only you can grow that one okay right so guys so in our lesson the first thing we need to know about technology so what is technology right what is technology so i i have provided here the technology in its broadest sense is the application of knowledge to the creation of tools systems or methods methods to solve a problem or perform a specific functions okay so just focus on the highlight text i have provided here application of knowledge to the creation of tool systems or methods you have the knowledge a theoretical knowledge using that theoretical knowledge you are creating tools systems or methods to solve some kind of problem or to perform a specific function so there is technology okay simply your application of knowledge right you are creating tool systems or methods using your knowledge it is called technology right and the classification of technologies when we are classifying the technology there are three classification according to your syllabus the one is called base technology and the second one is called key technologies and the third one is called pacing technology right so the base technology in simple words it is fundamental technology so as i said earlier what does it mean by technology the technology is the application of knowledge to create tool systems or methods to solve a particular problem or to perform a specific function so fundamental technology mean it is called base technology it is very fundamental right so it is essential for a company to compete right but it will not provide a significant competitive advantage what i'm trying to say is here it is giving a fundamental competition it means if there are 10 competitors in that industry all the 10 competitors they have this technology this is very basic technology all the people in the industry have this technology so if all the people are having this technology it will not give competitive advantage competitive advantage in the sense only a particular firm or only a particular person is having that skill or the capability so other people they don't have it so the people or the person or the company which is having that kind of skill or capability it is having a competitive advantage over other people so that is called competitive advantage so these base technologies will not provide competitive advantage from other rivals or competitors it is the basic technology it is accessible to all the people so it is very fundamental okay so in base technology guys we can say like a uh, electronic ignition systems in automobiles normally i will include images to understand very well so for a base technology i have included this electronic ignition systems in automobiles did you heard about this guys anyone heard about this electronic ignition systems in automobiles yes or no please be interact with me otherwise it's like a you know one way communication did you heard about electronic ignition systems in automobiles you all know that one but don't know about this name 
So this technology, you all know manual starting methods, right? Manual cars, before the push button in the cars, the new model car have push button, push start. It means you have to just press a button and it will automatically start. You know, right? But before this, there are manual starting methods. But now, almost 95% of the automobiles, it means the cars, they have this technology, which is replaced the older manual starting methods. So now it is a standard feature in almost all modern vehicles. So if you going, if you are going to buy a modern vehicles, definitely, even if it is a five or even if it is a three, uh, 3 million vehicle, or even if it is a 30 million vehicle, it is a standard feature in almost all modern vehicles, right? That is electronic ignition systems. It means just a push button and the vehicle will be started. So it is essential for the basic functioning of a car. But it doesn't give any one automobile manufacturer a significant advantage or significant edge over others because it is so widely adapted. So these kind of technologies are very base technologies because it is now a basic feature for all the automobile. So we are calling this as a base technology. So it is not going to give, okay, only the Toyota car is having a automatic push start or only the Honda car is having, only a Suzuki is having, no. All the cars are in the modern world, they are having this technology. So it is just giving a base feature it is not going to give you competitive advantage. It means only one firm or one particular manufacturer is serving. That is called competitive advantage. So the base technologies are not providing any competitive advantage. Guys, did you understand? Do you understand about base technology? So technology means what? Application of knowledge to create tools, systems or methods. So base technology means it's a fundamental technology. It won't give you competitive advantage. Okay. And uh, the other classification is key technologies. So the key technologies, it provides a competitive advantage. So we can attach here another term. The base technologies, it is not providing competitive advantage. Okay. But the key technology, the second classification, it provides a competitive advantage. So competitive advantage in the sense, the advantage that is making a firm or a manufacturer or a business unique because they are the one having that technology. It is key technology. So what kind of key technologies? The key technologies provide competitive advantage in two ways. The one is adding a unique feature to a product. So they have the product they are selling to the customers. If we have this key technology only with them, it is a unique feature because other people, they don't have it. Other manufacturers, other businesses, they don't have it. So it is adding a unique feature to a product. And sometimes it is improving the production efficiency. Right? It means... If there are 10 competitors or 10 manufacturing firms are there, only one person have this key technology. Other nine persons may, may take two hours or two days to complete a project. But because of this key technology for a one firm, they are finishing the project within uh, 10 hours. So it is a competitive advantage. It is improving the production efficiency. For an example, guys, for the key technology, I have included a picture and also the technology name. Advanced food packaging technology. So for example, these advanced food packaging technologies, it allows the food to be safely microwaved directly in the package. It means we don't need to remove the package and put into the microwave. We don't need to do that one. Within the package itself, you can put into the microwave it will safely microwave directly in the package. So this is a technology, advanced food packaging technology. So it is allow the food to be safely microwaved directly in the package, right? 
and also this technology guys not only it's convenient to the consumer but also what we'll do is differentiate the products in the crowded food market right for an example just assume there are 10 manufacturers or 10 restaurants in a particular market or particular industry but only one firm or one manufacturer is having this technology microwave packaging technology so it is differentiating right it is differentiating that particular firm or the restaurant from other people so it is a key technology because it is creating competitive advantage a uniqueness right so the manufacturers adopting this technology can stand out by offering a unique value added feature so this is some kind of example for the key technology so the key technology means what the key technology is providing competitive advantage but the base technology it is not providing competitive advantage it is a fundamental technology adopted by all the people in the market right so that's a difference between the base technology and key technology and let's move on to the pacing technologies so this pacing technology this is the key technologies in the future okay so this is going to rule the future so that are the key technologies in the future that is called pacing technology so i have included example for this pacing technology you just see the this picture right so for an example we can title it as a autonomous driving technology okay autonomous autonomous right driving technology it means before two three months back i think you heard a news about a fully automated car system saw introduced in us or uk i think did you heard about that news fully automated without driver there are some taxis introduced in the us in a particular region i think i, I can't remember the actual region but did you heard the, the news guys a fully automated autonomous driving technology in cars but it is not at widespread this technology is being developed and refined by some leading automotive companies okay but it has the potential to revolutionize the transportation making it safer and more efficient because if they are introducing 10000 cars there is no need of 10000 drivers so there is they can serve that money to invest in other materials okay so these firms are investing in this technology and they could they could gain a significant competitive advantage because it becomes a mainstream because only one firm or one particular car company having this, this technology and it will add it as a significant competitive advantage okay so these are the examples guys i can provide you so you must get the idea of what does it mean by base technologies and key technologies and pacing technology so base technologies are fundamental technologies it is not providing competitive advantage key technologies are providing a competitive advantage by adding a unique feature or improving the production efficiency and pacing technologies it will become a key technology in the future okay but it will give a very significant competitive advantage for the firm who is adapting by itself very fast time right so these are the classification of technology did you understand well did you understand guys is it fine right my speed is okay for you am i make sense with the examples right so then let's move to management of technology right so there are something called management of technology so management of technology mot we will call this as an mot management of technology the short term is mot okay so first we will learn about the scope of management of technology 
So it says combines elements from science, engineering, and management to help the businesses. Okay. So guys, it's an interdisciplinary field. It means it is combines the elements from science. So there are some science and there are some engineering facts and management, our common stuffs. To help the businesses to navigate the complex landscape of technological change because the technology is changing very speedily. So the science is there, the engineering is there, the management is there. So we are combining all the elements and we are helping businesses to solve the complex problems, right? So why this approach is vital and why we have to manage the technology because in the market, right, in the evolving market, rapidly evolving market, if a one firm to remain competitive, they should manage the technology, right? Then they won't survive in the future. So why we need to manage the technology? There are five reasons I have categorized. The first one is integration of technology with the business strategy in the firm level. Okay, so firm level in the sense for a particular business, for one firm, for a firm level. So for this, I have provided an example of Apple Incorporations. All of you know about Apple Incorporations. So you all must know the company Apple. Okay, so Apple Incorporations. So if we take a prime example as an Apple company, so Apple is integrating the technology with its business strategy, right? Because the Apple company is success because they have created a range of products like they have iPhone, they have iPad, they have MacBook, okay? So these all brands, all these all products that has the ability to blend the advanced technology with consumer focused design and marketing. So the iPhone has the technology, iPad has this kind of technology, MacBook has a kind of technology, all are advanced technologies. So they are using that advanced technology with consumer focused. Okay, what kind of problem we can solve for the consumer they are facing? So they are designing, they are marketing those products to solve that particular problem. So Apple continuously innovates its technology and they are doing innovation in their product offerings. And still now, they are the market leaders. And they are the one defining the new market trends, you know. You guys know that Apple Vision Pro, how they have marketed. If the new, if that Apple Vision Pro news comes to you, yes, they have reached you. Did you heard about uh, Apple Vision Pro? Any news about Apple Vision Pro? Did you heard about in news or YouTube video somewhere? Yes, they have marketed very well. Even before the Apple Vision Pro, Facebook is launched it is on VR headsets. But no one talked about that. Because the way they have innovated the technology and the product offerings that's make them as a market leaders, right? So the Apple incorporation, they are integration of technology with a business strategy. Okay. You have to remember. So they have the technology, they are innovating with the technology, right? And also they are integrating, they are combining that technology with their business strategy, how to market, how to reach the product offerings, how we can solve our customers, our consumer problems through the technology. So they are deintegrating, right? So this is the one of the manage. Why manage the technology? Because if we manage the technology properly only, we can integrate the technology with the business strategy at the firm level, okay? And the second one is impact on industry and national level. So now we are moving to national levels. So national levels, not about uh, firm level. 
Give me a minute. Okay. So national levels are a beyond level, beyond firm level. Okay. So impact on industry and national level. For example, I'm taking a renewable energy sector. Okay. You all know this about a renewable solar power systems, right? So the renewable energy sectors, it is impacting on the industry level, national level, right? So this technology, it means the renewable energy technology, you know, the fuel and other kind of oils are non-renewable energy sources. We cannot renew this again and again. So these renewable energy technologies, such as the solar and the wind power, so it is significantly impact both the energy industry and also the national energy policies also, right? So countries are investing in these technologies. So which countries are investing in these technologies, they can reduce their carbon footprint and uh, dependence on uh, oils and fuels from other countries like our Sri Lankan. So it will give a competitive advantage in the global push, right? We can create the sustainability. If we have our own renewable energy sectors, we don't need to rely on the fuels from Middle East countries, right? So if we manage the technology, it is impact not only on the firm levels, like as I said, Apple company is making profit because they are managing the, because they are managing the technology to integrate with their business strategy. But not only the firm level, if we are managing the technology very well, it can give an impact on the industry level also, right? And the third reason why you need to manage the technology, product, service, and process innovations. Innovations means we need to produce unique methods, unique offers that is not existing on the current market. So products, service, and process innovations, we can talk about Amazon's use of AI and robotics, right? So, did you all know Amazon's company? Amazon? It is not very much popular in Sri Lanka, but US, most of the people are using Amazon to order product. Like Daras, we have. It is an international one. Anyone here don't know about Amazon? Anyone? Just go and search on the Google Amazon.com. Okay. So what is this? Amazon's use of AI and robotics. So Amazon is a company like Daras, right? So just imagine that one. So Amazon has innovated in product delivery services. So they have innovated in product delivery services using the artificial intelligence and robotics in it is in, in their own warehouses. And also this technology has not only streamlined the supply chain, making it more efficient, but also set a new standard in the logistic and e-commerce industry. So now almost all the logistics companies and the warehouses in futures, they are going to emerge with artificial intelligence and robotics kind of things, right? So it is a product or service and process innovation. So actually this is a process innovation. They are innovating in the process. How to, so normally in a warehouse, a human will receive the package, but now a robot is receiving the package. A human is handling the package. Now a robot is handling the package, right? So that is a process innovation. Packaging also done by robots. So the product and services innovation. So we can achieve this only when we are managing the technology correctly. And the fourth reason why we need to manage the technology is a response to intense competition and a rapid technological change, right? So response to intense competitions. What does it mean by intense competition? It means a very high competition. Like, like in cameras, the Canon versus Sony, right? In laptops, the Microsoft versus Apple's. 
so in this intense competition if one firm want to respond to other firm activities a new products or new offering with a rapid technological change they must manage the technology otherwise they cannot compete if microsoft wants to compete with apple or samsung wants to compete with apple they have to manage the technology then only they can come up with a new products right so that's a, another reason so we can again take a, an example for the automotive industry to shift electric vehicles evs right ev vehicles mean electric vehicles most of the vehicles are in sri lanka are like a hybrid vehicles because for our environment hybrid is the best choice but in future the automotive industry it will shift to electric vehicles like tesla cars because in response to environmental concerns right so the technological advancements like an automatic company like a tesla you know tesla companies elon musk companies and also volkswagen they are transitioning transitioning to evs electrical vehicles so when they are shift as a strategic response to the competitive process, pressure and the fast pace of technological innovation in the automotive sector they must manage the technology if one particular company is moving to ev vehicles like for an example uh, toyota company is making electronic vehicles ev vehicles there must be a response from honda or other companies they will launch the electric vehicles but they must manage that technology they must have the access to manage and build electric vehicles then only they can respond to toyota company's actions otherwise they cannot so they have to manage the technology to respond to the intense competition and rapid technological change then that's a fourth reason why we need to manage the technology and the fifth one is technology for competitive success all right so for that i have taken the example netflix streaming technology you know netflix right netflix how simple this service you know originally if you see guys it is a dvd rental service right just imagine i don't know i think maybe you all are 2k kids right if you are 90 kids right it means uh, if you born in 90s to 94 95 did you see dvd shops you can go buy dvds music cds it is very rare to see now but it is there still it is there in sri lanka but what netflix is doing is they are just doing a dvd rental service like kind of netflix shifted to streaming technology they have they have used the streaming technology and they are transforming the entertainment industry okay so this move they not not only responded to the technological change but also they have shaped the consumer behavior we don't need to go and buy dvds and put into the cd player and if the time goes the cd or dvd it will crack we cannot use it for future but what does it netflix is doing you have to pay a subscription right you must have an internet connection come see our movies very hd very clearly so actually it's a kind of dvd rental service but they are using the technology called streaming technology right so how content is consumed is determined by netflix now so these kind of technologies and competitive success is only possible guys if we only manage the technology if we know about the management so these are the reasons why a firm or a company or a government any kind of people manage the technology did you understand why we need to manage the technology are you there all abirami aparna abdur rahman danushika hanif jafran sabran nafis nafras nilushi nishat revati 
Shahida, Subhashini, Vidushan, Hamza. So I said to you, guys, remember guys, focus. So we have focused on why manage the technology because at the firm level, there must be an integration of technology with business strategy, right? And also for the impact on industry and national level, the product service and process innovation and response to the intense competition and technology for the competitive success. So these are the five reasons why a firm should manage a technology. And other things we are going to focus on the components of manufacturing technology, right? The components of manufacturing technology. So, you know, manufacturing, very specifically, we are going to see about manufacturing. Manufacturing it means a company can import raw materials from another country or a company can make their own materials or they can buy locally the materials and in the factory they are processing and it will give the product the end product and they are selling so this is something called manufacturing so how a manufacturing industry or manufacturing technology shaped that industry so the components of manufacturing technology so as a component according to a syllabus there are four components okay the first component is called technoware and the second one is called humanware and the third one is called infoware and the fourth one is called orgaware right so something very uh, kind of jargons in an industrial words but you will understand this so technoware it's object embodied form okay so Object embodied form or technoware means it is a physical tools, machines and equipments used in the manufacture. Simple, simple terms. I'm saying physical tools, physical tools means you can see on your own eyes, right? Physical tools, machines and equipment that are used in the manufacturing. We are calling this as a technoware. Okay. So this refers to the physical tools, machines and equipment used in the manufacturing. For an example, just see this one what is happening here okay what's happening here so this is we can title it as if we want to title this we can say advanced uh, robotic arms okay so like our hands advanced robotic arms so these advanced robotics arms are used in automotive manufacturing plants, right? Car companies. So what they're doing is they're transferring this technology to a developing country, right? For an example, if that is if if, if Sri Lanka is going to take this technology, okay, this technoware technology, because this is a machine or tool or physical tool or whatever we can say. So it's an advanced technology, right? So it's transferring this technology to a developing country. If we are transferring to a developing country like Sri Lanka, there might be challenges because it will be high in cost. I'm pretty sure. Okay. And also, if we want to maintain these sophisticated machines in Sri Lanka, in Sri Lankan local engineers, they must understand a kind of skills, right? So this is something called technoware okay so we are in the components of manufacturing technology in the manufacturing technology one component is technoware technoware means the physical tools many uh, machines and equipment used in a manufacturing industry but it is an advanced technology okay using the advanced technology there are some tools so that is under the technoware then the humanware the human embodied firm it means the skills the knowledge and capabilities of the people Right. For an example, if they want to manage this kind of physical tools, advanced robotic arms, there must be local engineers in Sri Lanka with the skills and knowledge and capabilities to maintain this, to operate this. So it is something called humanware. So we will look at the specific example here. So you can see this one. These all are AI generated images, guys, right, for your understanding. 
I have taken this all right. So we can say like these are these are the uh, what you can say human way, right? For an example, if there are kind of a very big uh, CNCs, okay. For example, we can say this as a CNC. It means computer numerical control technology. It means you know 3D printing and also kind of uh, 3D works. We will input all the designs and stuffs and 3D models in the computer systems. And with kind of these machines, it will automatically draw that 3D parts and things. Okay. But what I'm going to emphasize here, it involves the skills of a human, knowledge of the human, capabilities of the people who operate and interact with this technology. Right. So if it is a CNC, it means computer numerical control machines, right? They are, if they are, if they want to use in a manufacturing, for example, in a developing country, they might first hurdles because they need to train the personnel, right? The particular person should acquire the skill level in adapting different educational backgrounds. So these kind of technologies are there. So one component is humanware. Okay. And another component is called infoware. So infoware means the technical data, right? Infoware in the sense the technical data manual software and intellectual property right for example for that particular manufacturing technology we need softwares algorithms because the high-tech supply chain if there is a, a high-tech supply chain a particular firm should manage that high-tech supply chain they must possess with softwares and algorithm so when transferring this technology uh, it might create issues like lack of local knowledge in interpreting and utilizing this complex data like that things. Okay. So these are the manuals and software systems kind of stuffs. Okay. So we need this one infoware. It means softwares and manuals, how to use that particular guidance like that. And also the other one is called orgaware, right? Institution embodied form. So this is all about the organizational structure and systems and the culture they have used. Like for example, quality control systems. If you take the pharmaceutical manufacturing industry, they must have quality control systems, right? So these are the components of manufacturing industry technology. So for an example, we need technoware, humanware, infoware, ogreware. So these are the components of manufacturing technology. It might be on your exam paper. Okay, as a question. Is it understandable? At least the term words, guys. So technoware means the machines, tools, physical tools used in the manufacturing. Humanware, human, we need we need humans to operate that particular technoware object. We need skills, capabilities of the human. And also infoware means we need software systems and manuals to operate that particular technoware object with human. And also ogreware means we need to have a kind of organizational structures, quality control systems. So if we have all the things, those are called components of manufacturing technology. Okay. And the final one, we are going to learn about technology S curve, right? Technology S curve. So the technology S curve in the definition, it's a model for understanding the life cycle of a technology, right? Whatever the technology, there will be an introductory stage and there will be a growth stage and maturity stage, like a product life cycle. Okay. So the S curve is a useful model for understanding the life cycle of a technology in terms of its performance and investments over time. Right. So guys, there are three stages in the technology S curve. So as you see in the book also, so technology performance and time and effort. Give me a second, guys. So these are the three major stages. So we call this embryonic growth, 
and maturity right so we will learn about this one embryonic it's an early development stage and growth it is rapid improvement and maturity performance plateau we will call this as a performance plateau so embryonic like this stage okay the very first stage very slowly they are growing but it is taking a lot of time to grow a particular technology embryonic so the performance improvements are uh, relatively slow okay if you see if we want to improve the technology of performance in the embryonic stage very slowly you can improve because the time is going the technology of performance it's very slowly improving okay so for an example we can say the early electric vehicles evs okay so these early electric vehicles for example when electric vehicles first entered in the market they had they had limited range right now i think only tesla's companies are having ev vehicles but high costs right so the technology it is in very early stage but with a big significant r and d research and developments needed to improve its performance and feasibility so these kind of technologies it is in early stage so they are in embryonic stage they will take much time to have small kind of improvement in performance of the technology so that is early development and the second one is growth the rapid improvement okay so this technology the performance improves significantly see so they don't need to invest much time for example a small amount of time but the growth is high growth is high very high right if you compare to the embryonic it is not taking much time but they are going a very dramatic growth right so this technology performs significantly as it becomes more understood and optimized because the company they they, they know very well about the technology what are the mistakes they have did in the embryonic and what is make them a little bit success so now they are focusing on that one and they are improving so they are in the growth stage so this is the second stage of a technology right for an example we can take the growth or rapid improvement phase the performance improvement is significant the performance improvement is significant for an example we can take the smartphone evolution so smartphone technologies are in the growth stage now because the technology's performance is improved significantly as it become more understood and optimized for an example just take about iphone the very first iphone and the iphone in 2024 how much they have improved now they know the technology they know the market they know how the consumer behavior all the things so they are in the growth stage now right so the this phase sees the rapid adoption and improvement with a notable increase in the performance per cost so smartphone evolution over the last two decades guys the smartphones have seen a meteoric rise in performance they have made a dramatic improvements in processing power camera quality battery life features etc etc right so they are in the growth stage they don't need to spend much time like introductory stage so we can say the smartphone technologies are in the growth phase and other phase is like maturity so it means they have made all the innovations they have made all the features then there's no space for any other innovation so they need to maintain the maturity okay so in the maturity place guys the technology reaches a point where the further improvements are minimal and more costly it means there is no space for any improvements they have made all the things whatever they can do in the growth stage now the improvements are very minimal and if we if they want to improve it a little bit it will cost you more right for an example you can take the jet airlines okay the jet airlines industry a commercial jet airliners they don't have increased uh, significantly uh, the speed but they have improved the fuel efficiency safety comfort basic technology so now they are in the maturity stage they don't need to increase any other thing right they have all the things then in the maturity stage 
but if they want to increase a little bit of performance they have to invest a lot of money because they have did all the things right so these are the stages this is called s curve okay this is called s curve so any technology the performance in the embryonic stage it takes much time but a little performance increase but in the growth stage they don't need to invest much time but their performance will be high in the maturity stage there is no space or there is no any other particular innovation they cannot do because they have did all the things in the growth stage so maturity stage they will keep the product as it is if they want to try new things it will cost them more because they are they are in the peak right this is called s curve did you understand the s curve guys did you understand the s curve vidurshan subhashini shahida revati nishat nilushi nafras nafis sabran jafran hanif hamza danushika aparna abirami fine right so that's all about today's class guys so today 1.1 it means from our 10 percentage of the syllabus we have covered this area 1.1 So now you know the definition of technology. What does it mean by definition of technology? The technology itself, application of knowledge to create tools, systems, or methods. What is management of technology? We need to manage the technology. Why we need to manage the technology? There are reasons. And what are the components of technology? I have taught you. And also the technology S curve and the stages of a S curve. So we have finished this one point one. okay so i hope so i hope so you understood the syllabuses and got the specific knowledge in this lesson and i need your comments guys because this is our very first lesson i need your comments and feedbacks from this lesson okay all right okay i i think we did an interesting session we already discussed all the stuffs right so let me know your comments feedbacks in the group see you guys see you in the next classes have a great day thank you bye